Okay, let me see if you can see my uh, presentation at least. Ah, okay, perfect. Now we see you. Okay, good. Not yet the presentation though. Okay, now it's up. Ah, perfect. All right, thank you. Thank you, Sam. The floor is yours. Thank you very much. Thank you for uh, giving me the time this afternoon. Uh, I'm going to talk uh, briefly over the next um, 10 minutes on uh, cross-border payments and the evolution in the state of international payments. Uh, Elias has um, introduced me. Um, I am in, based in London and I am a director in Edgar Dunn & Company. We are an international strategy consulting firm in payments and fintech. Um, very quickly, uh, there are three models that we have today at a high level uh, for international payments. Uh, the first one is the regular one that we all know as bankers. That's the uh, correspondent banking model that we are familiar with that uses SWIFT or other messaging systems. And it basically uses a chain of banks to take money from one bank to another bank, from one bank account to another bank account. Uh, the um, What's now, um, and, and usually for this, uh, banks have pre-funding bilateral arrangements with each other. Uh, what is now emerging is uh, regional networks. Uh, so, for example, in, in Africa, there is a regional network uh, called PAPS that is emerging that will connect all African central banks for bank payments, and it will connect domestic card schemes for card payments so that um, uh, transactions can stay within Africa and they do not have to incur higher charges or do not have to go to um, outside um, Africa for processing. Um, Buna is in the Middle East, uh, the uh, logo that you see uh, at the bottom of PAPS, and, and there are other uh, schemes like that emerging. So both for card payments and for bank payments, um, these regional networks are emerging. And the third one is the digital token, uh, and that's where we have the CBDCs, or central bank digital currencies, or simply digital tokens that are being developed. Uh, but we're still a long way from uh, using these for international payments. Um, some corporate uh, payments are managed uh, through the likes um, of Stellar um, for, uh, for international payments, but it's very early stages. So three areas that you have the existing bank payments, you have regional networks emerging, and then you have the uh, digital tokens that are emerging. Um, as open banking is helping in many markets because uh, particularly open banking is being used to fund the, fund the uh, payments that you are sending and, um, um, and also receive because, uh, because when you are sending the payments they're over the international network and then they have to hit the local bank account. So that's where open banking comes in and makes uh, payments very quick, um, easy to do and uh, error free. And they actually make the overall international uh, cost of payments uh, reasonably uh, inexpensive. Uh, very quickly, uh, there are uh, different types of payments that, um, that we're looking at. So if you look at the, um, their consumer payments and their business payments. So within consumer payments, uh, we have what we call remittances, so consumer to consumer uh, payments. Um, they, they have um, they're about a, a trillion trillion dollars um, uh, official and uh, unofficial. They're growing at a at a at a small rate. Uh, they're very important, uh, very important to get the um, AML uh, and uh, the risk management right. Uh, there have been improvements here as well. So, for example, now most digital app-based remittance companies can send an individual remittance, uh, complete the transaction in less than 30 minutes across borders because of the liquidity they have in the receiving market. Um, and they can also, they can guarantee this payment. So this is a great improvement from 10 years ago when it used to take two to three days for uh, a person-to-person -person international payment to be completed. The next one is consumer to business or e-commerce. So that is growing at a faster rate and we will just see it go um, higher and higher. Um, it's uh, to do with you know, lots of different, um, different elements. So there is e-commerce, but then there is also bank payments for consumer to business. Uh, 
Um, the, uh, there are companies that focus. So, for example, Air Wallex is an Australian company, which mainly helps um, Chinese small businesses uh, receive uh, receive fund uh, receive cash for their sales that are undertaken abroad. Then we have business payments, so business to consumer. These are wages and salaries, freelancers, subcontracting work, uh, the likes of Payoneer and, and many others, so where you can actually do uh, one to many payments. So you've got, uh, um, for example, a taxi company, which may be global, so you need to pay the taxi drivers, or you have freelancers who are working on your gig platform. They have to be paid. Uh, <clears throat> so that's, that's also a very um, significantly growing market. And lastly, business to business, that's where the biggest share of the cross-border or international payments opportunity is. As you can say, the market share is um, 87 to 90% of total cross-border payments because the values are much higher than on the consumer side. And within that, the large companies are well covered by banks, but it's the small and medium-sized businesses which always have a problem working with banks or banks have a problem working with them uh, because uh, they need a lot of uh, attention. And usually large banks do not have the time to give them the attention. So as we see across the world, lots of small uh, fintechs are emerging who are focused on providing international cross-border payments services, as well as other value-added services to small businesses. Uh, Ilya, uh, do I have a, a couple of minutes left? Sure, sure, go ahead. Okay, so um, as we indicated that uh, business banking for SMBs uh, uh, is provided by traditional banks, but they do not re they re really serve large corporates. And there are studies being done which, uh, for small businesses, and about half of the small businesses say that um, banks really do not help them. First of all, banks are uh, uh, very conscious of risk. They don't want to take risks with small businesses. So they would either close down their accounts or they would not allow certain types of payments to go through. So international gambling payments uh, that big gambling uh, uh, companies would like to do. Banks do not like that. They do not give them the right attention. So in small businesses, they do not have lots of accountants, so they make mistakes. Banks will not help them correct the mistakes. They will just send the whole file back and say, you sort it out and then send it to us when it is right. And then the small businesses complain they do not get the right foreign exchange or do not get the good foreign exchange from the large banks. Um, and um, the, the, the service levels are not at par with what the large corporates uh, uh, receive. So growingly, alternative providers are coming up. So I mentioned um, Airwallex, um, there was MoneyCorp, there are many others uh, that are providing these features. Now, the features are at par with business banking, what the big banks provide. So fintechs are really coming into this area. It's a massive, massive business. And banks have just taken that business for granted that this was theirs always. But fintechs are quite uh, successful in taking this business away from banks, starting from international payments, helping small businesses, holding their hands while they actually take them through the uh, business journey and then trying to sell them other products like trade finance and, um, and lending. Uh, and they are actually much better in, in the APIs that they have developed. So it's easy to integrate with them. Uh, some of the new companies, basically the documentation for APIs is very good. So the, um, the, the FinTech or the company that wants to send money abroad, collect money from abroad, uh, can look at the documentation and develop the right APIs very quickly. And finally, um, the um, you know um, SMEs. Um, uh, it's 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 not just in banking, but actually other services they are slowly uh, offering as well. These fintechs, and they could be, for example, corporate cards. Uh, that, uh, for example, in a shipping company, um, you you enter with international payments, but you actually help them um, help you actually provide them with corporate cards that individual employees can use across across the globe. So lots of opportunities with a focus on small businesses in the cross-border payments area. So uh, that's my presentation for today.
thank you very much for your for your time thank you very much sammy Bye.